What's up? It's your boy CM Diesel, and welcome to an episode of Test the Midwest Worldwide. I got my two sahas in this thing, DJ Fade. What's that? The one and only DJ Fade, representing the whole Midwest. Sure. And my man Ali F, baby, you understand me? Sure. So, you understand? So listen, we're going to get into the top three groups of all time. Top three rap groups. So listen, from my opinion, and how it influenced the culture, and how it influenced us. So we in this thing. We gonna start off with my man DJ Fade, of course. First of all, we in this shop, y'all. Anytime you in nap time, the whole Midwest come down here and get a cut. One of the tightest hands, definitely one of the tightest DJs in the city. So we want to always represent that y'all come down and pay respect and homage. But anyway, let's get to the let's get to the mix. DJ Fade from one, two, three. Mm -hmm. Your top three. Mm -hmm. Top three groups of all time. I got mine, nigga. I got mine. That's gonna be kind of hard. You know, okay, this is 2021. We going from uh, three to yeah, one. Yeah. I'll leave you going to three to one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Give Go. me number three, bro. I'm gonna do um. U G K. What you think about that? U G K. Okay. They experience. I mean, you know what I mean. They influence me on chopping blades, riding candy paint. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Out here, I wasn't doing my thing, but I was doing my thing. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Yes, sir. So it was some inspiration in uh, doing what I was doing when I was younger, when I was coming up. You know what I'm saying? So you going with them? Good or bad? Okay. Going with them. Okay, you going with UGK. UGK number three. What about like uh, who, are you, who are you going with? Who are you going with? Oh man, you know to be honest though, my number three, and number two, they kind of the same. And I guess for me, I need three big dogs. I'm like, get you, I'm gonna get you, I'm gonna get you, I'm gonna get you. Two red hat on. I, but I feel like this though, right? For me, it's about who influenced the culture, and it's also a lot of our favorite rappers. That's their favorite groups too. I mean, mm -hmm. I done heard ASAP Rocky mention these guys before. I done heard Drake mention these guys before. J. Cole, Kid Cudi. And we all know the new generation love these individuals. So for me, the first one I'm going to go with, and it's the way they rap, the, the melody, the harmony. I feel like I got it away right there. I think I know but I'm going to say, I'm going to stick with Midwest and Bone Thugs. That's mm -hmm. my number three. Okay. Okay. You know. Okay. The crossroads. And, and, and again, man, you done, you done heard Drake mention Bone Thugs. Yeah. You done heard Kid Cudi, and for these new generations, that's what they look up to. Yeah. And Bone Thugs and Harmony, man, they might not got they. they I don't think they financially getting their blessings, but as far as what they did to the culture, man, man, you can't take that away. You can't. You cannot take that away, man. From the from, from the 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 way they the melodic flows and the, yeah. the rapping and the yeah. singing. And who's best at doing that? And then five, Drink. five individuals. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I believe that Bone Thugs and Harmony, man, that's all my number three. RIP okay. Easy E. Yes. Salute. Yeah. You Salute. Know, Bone Thugs definitely. Race. If Bone Thugs went around, I feel like a lot of people wouldn't be who they are today. Yeah. Yeah, because, and even though you picked them, Man, they flows are so immaculate. I mean, and it's timeless. Oh man, it's I mean, timeless. you can go back. You can bump uh, East Ninety Nine. You can bump Thug Mentality. Thug is rugged as bone. You know what I'm saying? The first of the month. For man. The love of money. Yeah, yeah, all that stuff, man. So I believe that Bone Thug they really impact in 1994. And, and sculpted the culture into that's what they pick, are today. Bro. That's a damn good pick. And that's number three. I still got two more. But you know what? That's I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna piggyback off of you. That's probably. The only group or feature that made Tupac seem regular. Uh -huh. And Tupac still was hard. You remember the one that did? Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, man. Yeah, I mean, that beat with the oh, guns, God, that beat bro. right there, man, man, no beat can compare it to that. And you got to also keep in mind, too, that Bone is one of the very few groups that have done songs with Sade, Biggie, Ooh, I know. Pac, Big Pun, Easy E, I mean, 3 Six Mafia. Phil Collins. You know what I'm saying? I mean, how many song. rappers you know them dance off the Sade? I, oh shit! Come on now. You kidding me? 
Hey <laughs> boy, you yeah, you went you went heavy on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. You still got two more though. You got two more? Yes, yeah, yeah. Man, I'm stuck. It's on you. <laughs> I'm stuck because I got four. That's but good. we just need three. <laughs> I'm going with the bank. I'm going EPMD on the three. Mm -hmm. I'm going EPMD because these cats right here made differential, differential T, that's, that's a word, sound so motherfucking good. They took the old shit with the trap man and just killed it. A whole new flow. It was the grind age, the production, Paris and Dallas making Paris, E making Dallas, mm -hmm. authenticity. This flow was different from anything came out of New York. And they fuck with the greats. This me. They fuck with the greats on the production. And I mean, man, these cats, from them, you went from Paris to the hit, motherfucking hit squad, Dazza Fat, you know what I'm saying, K Solo. Then you went from Eric Sherman. Eric Sherman went from fucking New York to mm -hmm. down Atlanta and flipped the whole motherfucker. Before they really start doing shit in Atlanta, mm -hmm. Sherman was down there doing shit, putting people on. Um, he got Red Man. Come on, man. Red Man should be in everybody's top five. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna put him in mind right now, but that <laughs> nigga, I mean, I really, I mean, I really rode, man. My whole family, nigga, I had the kids in the car with the wife riding red, man. Mm -hmm. Time, 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 time for some action. Mm -hmm. Everybody bumped that. Mm -hmm. So you got him, you can keep going, man. So I'm gonna go with EPMD. And then on top of that shit, from the crossover to all the albums, man, strictly business, man. I mean, if you got a catalog, cause like when a lot of people judge rappers, I judge rappers off of the shit I'm playing. The hits, like you can be the most lyrical motherfucker in the world, but if your music garbage, I ain't gonna say garbage. If your music ain't appealing to me, I ain't fucking with you. Yeah, 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 you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. So my top ten or top three ain't gonna be everybody. So I'm going with EPMD. Shout out to That's my cool. favorite. That's you cool. feel yeah. me? I'm y'all fuck with that? I fuck with that. All right, cool, cool, cool. Well, I'm, I'm gonna go back. I mean, we back here, Ali. Number two. What's your number two? All right, so I mean, you know, we got the we got the Bone Thugs. I think they influence the culture. In no disrespect, you know, we got Terror Squad, we got oh, NWA, we got Cole. No Limit, Cash Money. Ooh, but man. I don't think nobody has ever mm -hmm. tried to mimic none of them rappers. And I think, like, you know, when you mimic somebody, yeah. that's very flattering. Yeah, that's yeah, form of flattering. You know what I'm I don't think nobody form has flattering. really tried to mimic, you know, Rockefeller or mm. you know. Uh, Swisher House back in the day, so oh, no disrespect to them dumb rappers right there. Yeah. But again, I don't think they impact the culture like this next group. I'ma say. You sound like you about to go up east. Nah, nah, I'm keeping it. I'm keeping it. On, I mean, hey, on man, the map, on the, your shit. on the map, they man. may say. On the map, they gonna say this is the South. But I've got to think this is still Midwest. Come on. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So again, no disrespect to the Swisher House and. You know, the cash monies and, yeah. and you know, all that stuff like that, man, to the, you know. Damn, hot boys. But, you know, but I'm, I'm gonna go with, uh, I'm gonna go with 36 Mafia, man. Ooh, I think 36 Mafia, what you think, the way they impact the culture, I mean, you can't take it away. Nah. I mean, before I pulled up here, I was listening to some Kusta nigga. And if mm. you bump that Kusta nigga, man, the beats, yeah. I mean, it was, it was repetitive, but it was so catchy. I mean, yeah. even one of the songs that Drake yeah. and Jay Z just put out. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't you can't compare it to this song, man. And Diddy Paul did Diddy that Paul beat. Diddy Paul is a monster. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, a so you know, I mean, you got the Swiss yeah. beats, you got the Timberlands, you got all these dudes from Rails, man. But how people try to mimic Three Six Mafia? Yeah. They beats. They might not have had the flows. Yeah. But they had the beat, man, to go along with it. And again, Three Six Mafia was, was the first crunk. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, man, I believe that Three Six Mafia has influenced the culture, and without them, rap music wouldn't be what it is today, man. I'm gonna tell y'all something real quick, real quick. I remember when I was in my heyday in the streets, and 
Shout out to DJ World. What's up, World? DJ World, this is before they hit everybody with the mixtape culture. Like when they when the uh, feds hit everybody, mm -hmm. DJ World was doing numbers with the mixtape. He had a shop in Indianapolis on uh, 10th Street. Mm -hmm. And um, it was Gang <coughs> and um, Juicy J up there. Yeah. They were just really, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it was yeah, like yeah, yeah. Three Six Mafia had their thing, but yeah. it was like, and I came in there, man, they was doing um, shop, shop, pop up shops and all that shit, signing autographs, singing, yeah. and um, signing autographs, and the white kids was coming in and shit, bro. Mm -hmm. And it'd be like probably like 15, 20 kids. Mm -hmm. Man, who knew? Yeah. They stuck to it, mm -hmm. and they got rich. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So to all y'all out there, <clears throat> hey, if you got a dream, believe in it, trust God, and stick with it, because mm -hmm. that's how you're going to get it. I seen it, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Trying, struggling. Look at them now. Juicy J, y'all yeah. already know. <clears throat> y'all already know what they do. I mean, so, man, you go back and you bump some of my old albums, man. And I mean, type. you go back you bump Project Pack, Get It Green. Yeah. Come on, man. I remember when that album dropped. Being on 38th Street. Come on. Come on, man. You know what I'm saying? Everybody listening. I, I'm telling you, man, when Project Pat dropped, man, I swear that changed the whole atmosphere of the city, though, know, man. You know what I mean? Go back and listen to that Project Pat, man. The nigga's still hard. Yep. So get Project Pat shit. Yep. Support Crunch that nigga. Black. You know what I'm saying? They come through here all the time. Support the chat. You know what I'm saying? And you know, real talk, to be honest, too. See, man, that's the chat ain't. And you know what, real talk, to be honest, man, what? people always talk about the hardest female rapper. And man. of course, they want to say the cliches. And the Cardi B's. Come on, man. People be sleeping on Gangsta Boo. Big, I seen who you chose. 